Hi, I'm Adrian Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome to the Advancement Spot Podcast. I'm your coach, Adrian Schneer, and I am so glad that you've taken time out of your busy day to spend some time here with me and Jaylene today. Jaylene is one of our amazing, amazing community members. She has completed her BA with a double major in criminology and psychology with a double minor in gerontology and human rights from St. Thomas University in New Brunswick. Jaylene is from Nova Scotia and currently attends court as a shadow student with a Crown Attorney Lawyer. Jaylene is currently applying to law schools in the Maritimes, where she will continue to make an impact on survivors of sexual and physical violence. Jaylene is a devoted member of her community and a member of our community, of course, and we are so excited to have her here and to honor the work that she does and that she continues to do every single day. So welcome, Jaylene. Thank you. So before we dive in, why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself, about the work that you do and the communities that you support? The work I've done has reflected through university at my time of volunteering at the Women's Center to being an RA to being on the sexual assault committee at St. Thomas University and also now where I'm in the middle of volunteering doing my criminal record check, all that for the women's shelter back home where I live. Amazing. Amazing. And you also work with a crown attorney. And I think that that is one of the things that has, that stood out to me in one of our first conversations, because you sort of glossed over it. Do you remember? (laughs) Do you remember we were talking and you were like, yeah, and I also shadowed this lawyer, you know, we go to court and I'm like, hold on a second. How long have you been doing this for? And it was a significant period of time. And so you, you do that quite regularly still. I do. Yeah. I go probably on average five times a month. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less depending on the schedule in court. And I sit there and just observe and listen to trials, plea hearings, victim impact statements. And I really enjoy it because it also reflects like my interest of hearing survivors and advocating for survivors and being able to actually view this, how the legal system works with survivors and how it impacts survivors and how sometimes it's not always on the survivor's side is really interesting to me because I can see it. It's right in front of me and I can just critically think and learn on what to do and what not to do in the future. Right. And that's a position that so many people, students, and even young lawyers don't find themselves in. Like, going to court and actually sitting there and absorbing everything that you're seeing from the way that court actually happens to the way that witnesses and even the parties are treated to the way that the lawyers interact with the court staff and with the judge to the way that evidence is presented. I mean, you are just learning so much that many people, I would say in my experience, 90, 95% of lawyers don't actually have courtroom experience until their first day when they're there and they're required to represent a client. And so you have actually taken it upon yourself to give yourself that opportunity. And I want to celebrate that with you today, among all of the other work that you've done on this journey that you've, that you've given yourself, because this is, this experience is just one of the most formative and, and informative experiences that you could ever give yourself the opportunity for. So I just want to really congratulate you on that. And for for having that foresight to become informed and actually take an active role in that for yourself. Yeah. So 
what I want to learn more about today is your process of actually creating your applications, actually creating your applications. So we first became introduced to each other as part of one of our master classes for St. Thomas University. And so tell me a little bit about what you expected when you signed up for that master class versus what you got. At the beginning, just want to say like your Zoom mastering class for St. Thomas was really engaging. And you were always talking about you and well, not you, but other people. <laughs> and how the application needs to showcase you. And I was sitting in my basement by myself, just so overwhelmed with applying because you're so this associated and you're alone and you're overwhelmed and you have all these feelings like you're not good enough and when I started the course I thought like at first I was overwhelmed but as I broke down the course and started doing it little by little I gained more confidence I gained the ability to trust myself that I know what I'm doing and that I can do this and then an application is just a little bump in the road to do what you want to do. It's just the, that you need to put your foot in the door to get where you want to go. So I expected that I would be able to do my application, that I would be able to submit it, that I would be able to do the little things that they need to do. I did not think that I would gain the tools that I could use in my professional and personal life, such as my mindset, believing in myself, being there for myself, showing up for myself, and how I had very little confidence. And now I feel so confident and I'm so proud of myself. And I can see the hard work that I've done over the years and how it's helped me get to where I am today and how it's going to help me in the future because it's just small steps that lead to my big accomplishments. That's right. That's absolutely right. And so talk to me a little bit about that, because when you went through the process of creating your resume and CV, before you got to your personal statements, you began to realize how all of the dots connected looking back. So tell me a little bit about that experience for you. At first, I didn't know where to start. So I was going to my emails. I have a container full of all my like certificates, my achievements, my scholarships, all that. And I was just flipping through and I was like, oh yeah, I did that. Oh yeah, I did that. And then I was just putting it through. And next thing I had like 13 pages on my CV. It just came from like zero to 13 because I was going to, I was doing the work. I was looking at it. And by doing that, I could see, I forgot I did this. Oh, I forgot I did that. Oh my goodness. Look at all the things I did in my first, third fourth year when I thought I did nothing when we went from in person to online I thought I did absolutely nothing and then I was involved in a committee I was involved in this and that and then it just like it really showcases your ability and it really showcases you and your right which actually was the title of the master class (laughs) how to showcase yourself in your graduate and professional school applications and then the course really helped you every step of the way to do that. As you say, you went from zero pages in your CV to 13. And for anybody out there listening, a CV and a resume are different. Your CV is your master document with everything on it. Your resume is your max two pages document that is narrowly focused on your next endeavor. And so your CV is where you should be putting all of these nuggets that you have been working on all of these experiences. And so by going through that process, you were able to actually look back and realize how everything connected. You were actually able to realize, and I remember like the light bulb moment during one of our coaching sessions together. And I was like, Jaylene, you like, all of this makes so much sense. And you were like, oh my God, it does. (laughs) It does. And then you worked on your personal statement. So tell me a little bit about the transition from working on your CV and resume to your personal statement. I remember in our, one of our coaching sessions, how you were like, my goodness, the confidence that you have 
from doing your CV and your resume. Not doing it is just like amazing because I became like this totally different person who started like believing in myself. So the transition to doing my CV and my resume, I know before and like enrolling in this course, I was so overwhelmed because I didn't know how to talk about myself. I didn't want to feel like I was talking too much about myself and that I was showcasing saying too much of myself. Mm. And when I was doing my CV and my resume and transitioning into my personal statement after the, after enrolling and doing the work, I realized your personal statement is about you. It's about showcasing you and your experience and everything that you've done and how it's an accomplishment and putting you to where you are today. I realized it's okay to talk about myself and it's okay to, that I feel confident and proud of everything that I've overcome, everything I've accomplished, everything I have done, and that I shouldn't feel guilty for stating everything that I've done and including it in my personal statement and just making my personal statement a reflection of myself and my experience and all my accomplishments. Yeah. And, and so tell me a little bit about the framing work, because it's not just about making a list right? That's more like in line with the CV. It's still not a list. It's very strategic work. But talk to me about what you learned about framing your experience through that process. I took a little bit of my own personal experience and a little bit of everything that I've done and just kind of created a flow where I stated like my main experience And then I went into a new paragraph and I talked about what I'm doing right now, which is job shadowing and hoping that I get the volunteer with the women's shelter. And then I talked and then I flowed into the stuff that I've done at St. Thomas and just listed it all. Yeah. So it's really about the, the process of showcasing yourself is really about the growth through experiences, right? Yes rather than those lists that we find in that we start with yeah. right because it's really that that's like the easiest thing to do is say okay well first I did this and then I did this and then I did that and then I did that but by the end of like all the revisions and all of the editing what you had done was have a really compelling authentic and unique and polished story of experience and growth also informed by your own experience yes and where I made connections and I made sure that I felt confident and that I felt like it was something I was proud of my personal statement and which I made sure I integrated everything Mm -hmm. In a way, like you said, it's a story about you. So I made sure to showcase myself, my experience, everything I've done in a story. It's a story of myself, my experience, my achievements, and everything I've done. Yeah. Still using the very specific format that is required of personal statements, which is generally not talked about and not made readily or clearly available anywhere online. But when when you were talking about your experiences, so much of your experience professionally has been informed by your experience personally. And as much or as little as you're willing to share, I would love it if you could talk about how you handled talking about and discussing sensitive topics when it comes to personal experience in your personal statement and how that helped to frame why you have decided to do the work that you've decided for your for your personal statement a lot a lot of the times people don't want to make it personal people don't want to share the reasons why they're motivated why they're doing what they're doing and for me i there was a time where i was afraid to admit my experience and now i'm very open and very motivated by my experience where I can openly say I am a survivor of sexual violence then I have experienced sexual violence and how it has not defined me but it is a part of myself that I have turned into motivation to help other survivors where you can see in my story my experience where I 
have become involved in helping others where I have really showcased my motivation that this is what I want to do. And you don't have to go into detail in your personal statement. That's right. You can just use a statement where if you suffer, not suffer, but if you have a mental illness, you could say, I have a mental mental illness that has impacted me and motivated me because it's your experience, your your story. You don't need to go into the nitty gritty detail and how that has influenced and impacted you. You don't need to share that part of you. That's right. You don't need to share a medical record. Exactly. You don't need to share anything that, that you're not comfortable sharing. When it comes to framing your experience, insofar as anyone is comfortable sharing some sensitive information, for example, I am a survivor, you don't need to share any details of the experience or experience is plural for anybody, but the story and the foundation that we are able to create using just that simple language propels us then into the kind of statement where you make very clear that your experience, you have been able to process through it in such a way that you are now using it to empower others. And then the trajectory of your work all began to make sense. The how you made choices throughout your trajectory. So from one experience to the next made total sense, but you didn't, we don't need to reveal anything. You didn't need to reveal anything about the experience itself. And so at the end of the day, talk to me about your comfort level when it came to sharing just the, the sort of the simple language around your personal experience without actually detailing it. It took like a lot of self-reflection, a lot of time to be able to say that I am a survivor. So in my personal statement, it's not something I'm embarrassed about. It's not something that I'm ashamed of. So I was able to put it in my personal statement because I know that it is a root to my story, to everything that I've done. Yeah. And when you ultimately were done your personal statement, when you ultimately were done, you'd reflected on everything, you had written everything. How did you feel? I felt so confident. I was so happy. I was just filled with so many positive emotions that I was like, whoa, I wrote this. I did this. And that I'm so beyond proud of my personal statement. And then I wish I could just print it off and hand it to everybody. <laughs> I'm so proud of them, want everybody to read, but I know it's like my personal statement. So <laughs> I'll, I'll leave that to the my applications and the universities to look over. But it's just something that is such a reflection of myself and my story. And that I just feel so much better with my applications that my personal statement is a reflection of myself and that it is something like I am proud of and that I want to show and that I want to share to universities. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. And what I'm really hearing is that you feel in alignment with how you represented yourself in your experience, how you showcased yourself. And so how do you feel that, what, what was your perception before the masterclass and before mastering academic applications of showcasing yourself versus what it is now. So before I felt like alone, I felt ashamed. I felt just really felt isolated Mm -hmm. and all these emotions that I wasn't good enough and that my story and my experience, again, is not good enough and that I don't have the experience. I don't have the story that they're looking for, I don't have any of that, to now it's complete opposite, where I'm very confident, I'm very proud of myself, I'm proud of my application, I'm proud of my story, I'm proud that my story aligns with myself, I'm very happy that I did write a really well-written application and personal statement, and that I don't feel alone anymore. I feel 
so much more love for myself mm. and that I am really happy showcasing myself and I don't feel ashamed to talk about mm. myself. I don't feel alone. I feel that my personal statement now is such a reflection, such a good story of my experience, my achievements, and that I am a survivor of sexual violence. And then I'm able to showcase that little root, that little seed that plants my overall achievements and experiences and wanting to help others. Thank you for sharing all of that. What was this, what was the thing or what were the things that helped you along the way get through those feelings of shame to a place where you felt comfortable actually sharing and becoming proud of yourself? What happened? Showing up. Mm. There for myself, working through the intrusive thoughts and reminding myself that you can do it and that just take it one day at a time where I know it sounds kind of silly, but I would write myself cute little notes, little sticky notes, and I would put them where I could see it, where I'm working. And then I, when I did feel down on myself, I would listen to a song that boosted my confidence, that made me want to dance and sing and laugh and smile. And when I was in that moment where I felt really good, I would sit down and work on my application. I would sit down and work on the things that I was putting myself down. And again, just like showing up for yourself is the number one thing that you can do because that is so important for laying the foundation for building a good application. Yeah. And what also helped was having the resources and coaching and having others who felt the same way that I did and realizing that I'm not alone and that these are feelings that everyone feels. That's right. That's right. And so you're referring specifically, I think, to the community, to our community. Right. Yeah. And so you joined our community as part of Mastering Academic Applications, but then you also joined our advanced coaching community called the Success Society. So since you brought it up, tell me a little bit about your experience as part of the community. It has been nothing but positive nothing but amazing just having a community where you feel like you belong having a community that feels the same way that you do having a community that lifts each other up when you're so down on yourself and being like hey I felt that too I used to be like that and you're not alone and your feelings are silly your feelings aren't the way you feel is valid Yes. Yeah. Because every single person in that community, in our community, we've all felt, including myself, by the way, because I've been through this process too. We've all felt this way. We've felt isolated. We've felt like everyone has more than we do or something that we don't have. But really, do you think that's true? That other I people... Mm -hmm. I don't think it's true like that you're the only one. I think it's true that everyone feels this way when they're dealing with such a big application and such a, a big thing that's so scary. Mm -hmm. so a lot of people are scared of application and a lot of people are scared of the big standardized test and everybody's scared of the big personal statement and everybody's really scared of all these things that you have to do for your application. But I don't think people have realized that you've already done the work. You just need to sit down and reflect on what you've done and like write it out. It's not like you have to go out and get a new job or go out and do all these things when you've already done it. You've already done the work. You just need to show up for yourself in this moment of time and write, write it out. Mm -hmm. Write it out. And, and then how did you feel that the structure of not only the program, but for example, the modules, when we work on, you know, each thing, the step-by-step, -step, how do you, do you feel as though the structure has allowed you to be more creative in the way that you express yourself 
or expressed yourself in your applications? Yes, I do. And the structure specifically on your two, where we talked about our five-year vision, mm-hmm. that really highlighted what I want and defining like success and defining all these things that you want in the future has really helped me with my mindset on being able to do each thing because I can go back and redo the five-year vision. I can go back and redo all these small things to help yeah. me with the bigger things. That's my CV, my resume, per- my personal statement. So I'm not ashamed that I've gone back to the beginning modules. Yeah. Right. Continue to do the smaller steps to help with the big steps. And the layout of the course is structured in a way where you can go back and then you can continue to move forward even if you do go back. Mm-hmm. And so many of our members actually go back several times and it's nothing to be ashamed about because so much of the work is laying that foundational reflective work, the, 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 those reflective pieces that we often do have to revisit over and over again. And what ends up happening over time is that you actually begin to be able to do that work without going back to the modules. And then you start to do it every single day or every single week. But really it, it implants this ability to do that in your mind at an instant, whenever you call upon it. And honestly, sometimes when you don't, it just becomes a part of how you think. And so the fact that you went back, like so many of our members do, to those foundational pieces as you're working on the next steps is such a powerful thing to do. And so the way that, that you've approached your applications, Jaylene, I have to tell you, and, and also your personal advancement in addition to your professional advancement has been so inspiring because you have really developed not only into an advocate for other people, but also for yourself. Do you feel that way too? It's what I've seen. I do. And I feel you can't help other people until you focus on yourself because you need to focus on you in order to help others. And you are the most important person in your life. You are always going to be there for you when you need someone. So you need to treat yourself like someone who you love, someone who you appreciate because you, again, are the most important person in your life. Yep. That's absolutely true. It's so true. And when you are talking about really advocating for yourself, making sure that you're giving yourself the opportunity because you've said you've, you showed up for yourself, which you absolutely did. So the other part of your application that you were working on in parallel with your personal statement, your CV, your resume, the rest of it, was your standardized test. And we talked a lot about strategies around your standardized test. So can you tell me a bit about your experience and how that that those conversations and, and actually applying those strategies worked for you? The biggest struggle I had with my standardized tests that really helped me group the foundations for the strategy Mm -hmm. to overcome the standardized test was not focusing on the number. Mm -hmm. That is the biggest problem that I had. The biggest bump in the road is every time you look at your application school, you're like, oh my goodness, the numbers, this is what your score must be to get in or like the average score. But what they're not telling you is what you keep repeating to myself is that people get in with lower and higher scores and that is just an average. And that you have other components to your application that can make you stand out, like your personal statement. And strategies I used to overcome this was stop looking at the numbers, to redirect my thinking where I thought about my other components, such as my personal statement. And when I made my personal statement a reflection, a story, and then set something in front of, and again, wish I could just throw the copy and send to everybody, was that you have this well-written, well-reflected, well-polished that aligns with yourself, your values, your experience, your personal statement. So that really helped me 
overcome focusing on the number, focusing on the test is the only thing that's going to get me into this, to this program, this university. And just thinking of the test as something that's a barrier. That's something that everybody needs to write in order to apply, in order to get into the schools that you want to get into. And that also helped me. And also strategizing my study time, not overstudying, not having six hours a day where I study, because you cannot study for six hours a day, where I only studied five days a week for like two to three hours. And I did the practice test. I showed up for myself. And I stick to a study schedule. I stick where I didn't go about three hours a day. And when my brain needed a break, I would give my brain a break. I was not pushing myself where you need to read five pages and then you can get a break. Oh, you need a break now? That's okay. We'll come back. That I didn't push myself and that I listened to my body. I listened to my mind. And again, I showed up for myself. Yeah, you sure did. And Thank you for sharing all of that. And it's so important that you internalized all of that because it's all true. We talk all the time about my experience on admissions committees and that I bring you everything that happens behind the scenes and as part of our program. And the fact that you were able in practice to actually say to yourself, okay, the numbers, okay, we get them. We understand them. He, this is the perspective that we take. This is the perspective that I take personally that I bring to all of you is that we understand the numbers exist. We don't ignore them, but we also don't hyper-focus on them. And we realize that the numbers that are being presented by the schools, in the magazines, online, in the info booklets, in the pen, in the that long document <laughs> that has the details of every single school or documents, plural, that all those numbers are medians and averages. And this is like grade, you know, what, three to five math. What does that mean? It means that there are numbers that are higher and numbers that are lower. And on the admissions committee, I can tell you, and this is, you know, exactly what you've just said, people are getting in with higher scores and lower scores, higher numbers and lower numbers. And what is the make or break? The written, the written, how you show up for yourself, how you're showing up on paper, how you're showing up, because the paper is number one. Like that's, that's the first experience that the admissions committee has of you. That is your initial first impression. And some schools have interviews. That's the second impression, but they, you have to get through that written portion in order to get to that next step. And so the fact that you were able to really internalize that is such a huge win. And I'm seeing now, just for some context, how long has it been since we've started to work together, Jaylene? Because this kind of growth, people pro probably listening, thinking, oh, this has taken her years. I'm never going to get there. How long has it, re has it really been since we started working together? Just roughly. <laughs> so it's only been four months, five months. Since working together, and I changed my mindset, I showed up for myself. And of course, I still have more I can learn. We always have more we can learn. Always, and it never stops. Never, it never stops showing up for yourself. This is again like a foundation that's going to help me in my professional career and my personal life and personal experiences is showing up for myself and working, and that I have now laid the foundation and that I can keep building. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You. You've heard it here, four months, three months in mastering academic applications. And now as part of the, our advanced coaching community, the Success Society, you are continuing just to skyrocket your advancement, your journey, your growth. It's, it's, I'm so proud of you. You've accomplished so much in such a short period of time. And I know that you'll keep on keeping on. And this is, this is your journey. This is your journey. And I'm so grateful to be a part of it. So the last question that I want to ask you is what is a piece of advice that you would give to your younger self? If I could give advice, even to my younger self, like five months ago, four months ago, and even five years ago, it would be to show up for yourself, to focus on you, your advancement, you, and also to be there for yourself and to not be so hard on yourself. 
and that you're doing the best you can every single day. And your best will look different every single day as well. And that your best will also look different two weeks ago. And it just looks different every single day. And that's okay if your best is different than it was yesterday. And again, just focus on you, show up for yourself and be there and be kind. Don't be so negative on yourself. Don't listen to your intrusive thoughts. Don't listen to all the competition that's out there because it's not a competition. That we are all trying and doing our best. I love that. I love that. And that is in such alignment with everything that we do here. And so thank you, Jaylene. Thank you for being here. And congratulations on all of the progress that you've made on all of your accomplishments. And I can't wait to continue working together and be a part of your journey. It's truly such an honor. Thank you. Wonderful. And thank you for listening. And we will see you next week. Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want, and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at applyyourselfglobal and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode, leave this episode a review, and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.